I like it. Like okay, everybody, welcome, welcome. Uh, what we're doing today is we're continuing where we left off uh, last time, which was to um, uh, we we're, we're going to add some some functionality in the database to our Django project. Uh, so let me just go ahead and get my slides uh, ready here. Just kind of like to through the steps here. Uh, there's nothing new in the uh, in the class docs repository, as far as I know. Uh, so go ahead and just pull up the slides that we hit last. Um, well, Monday of earlier this week, and you'll find uh, everything there. Um, also, I'm going to, of course, you can't see what I'm doing now, but I'm going to pull up the um, same project that I was working on uh, last time when I, was, when, when I went to my Django project. I think that maybe um, for many of you is probably, it's probably the same. Uh, let me just go ahead and show you where I am uh, to, to put this on my screen. See it now. I'm hoping you can. Uh, so here I am. So this is where I was before. So I'm working in Django, my site. Hopefully you all um, are there. And if you had any trouble before, if you had any trouble with your um, getting your project going, um, then it is working um, now. If it isn't, you, there's still time. Don't worry about this. So you can still go through these notes later. But uh, what we're doing today is um, we're going to go, let me just go back through this, uh, my slides here. We're going to go, I think we left off um, at connecting the database. And so I'm going to go to, where's the connecting database part? Here, maybe I can't. Uh, let's see. Okay, well, let me, just, let me just talk about some of the steps we went through before, just so we can all get caught up here. But remember, though, that when you look at these slides here, let me just go back to the beginning here. The first slides that we have here are setting up the virtual environment. And so this is all that stuff that we had to type in originally. So this is what we did last time on Monday. And I think we also did this on Friday of the last week, where we created our virtual environment. Uh, then we had to activate that virtual environment. Now, if you're using Windows, it's probably, a, it, you're not using this word source. It's instead, if you're using Windows, I think you're just typing in something like, like this. You just you have to go into this directory here, script or my environment scripts. Whatever you call your environment, you could call it, you know, home or super environment or whatever you want. But then there's a file inside scripts called activate, which I think was a batch file. And you can go ahead and run that, and then that will give you and get you into this environment. Uh, so maybe I'll just go ahead and start that on my machine. In fact, I've already I've already done that. In fact, you can see uh, on my machine here that uh, this is this this tells me that I'm actually in my environment in which I can work, and I have my my um, and I have my my Django already installed there. So I don't need to go through and actually install uh, Django again. In fact, you can verify that Django actually is installed by typing in this command here, which is really just making a call out to your uh, Django installation. And you're saying, what uh, installation are you? And when you run this, it says, I am Django 3.12. Hopefully you're all on the same version that I'm using. Um, the reason why I would say be on this version rather than another version of Django uh, it's because they made some changes in Django. So you have, for instance, uh, more, uh, I don't know, more recent, um, well, the, the code that they use here is, is, is more recent and it's probably, um, well, I want to say more, it's more, it's more understandable. I hate to say that, but the, the original project um, had some, some places where you had to actually edit your own code. And that was really difficult to do, especially if you didn't really know what this code was doing. But here, I think when you run something like Django admin start project, um, much of the code that you would have had to install yourself in previous versions is actually being done for you. And so it's for that reason that I recommend on this version. Um, so anyway, and then what we have to do is um, I'm going to go in and actually run my, my uh, project. And so to do that, I have to go inside the project directory where I created. Remember, I called my project my site, for lack of a better, more exciting word. I don't know whether I should have called it something more Shakespearean or more academic, but, uh, you know, maybe thunder site or who knows. I didn't. I should have done. But anyway, no, but still, um, but my site works fine for this. And then what we need to do is we have to go inside that directory and we have to run this command here called run server. Now, let me just take you there. Um, and so when I'm inside my site, if I type in ls, you're always looking to find this file here, the manage.py. Now, remember that that file is the file that controls the site. And so if you want to turn, if you want to turn the site on, or you want to turn it off, or you want to tweak something, or you want to do something, you want to build something, 
you're going to be using this 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 command here, this uh, this program called manage, which actually surprisingly um, is not a very big file. It's only 662. In fact, you can look at the, the contents of this file, and you can see that actually there isn't much there isn't much to it. Really, what it does is just relays your commands to a bigger program that's inside Django in main that actually handles the heavy lifting. And so this is your kind of your, I guess you can call it a kind of a representative of the rest of the, the, um, the, the inner workings of the program. It's a driver. It's a, it's a driver. Let's call it a driver of the, of the program. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and test type in Python. Now, I don't have to worry about typing Python 3 on this thing here because when I'm inside my environment, I'm already in Python 3, which is actually quite rewarding. Otherwise, I would on my, on my particular setup, I'd have to type in Python 3. Um, then I type in manage, and I type in run server, and then if everything has gone according to plan, which it has, then you'll, you'll get this, this, uh, these statements down here. Um, however, if you have something wrong with your program, then you'll have a whole bunch of, like if there's a configuration problem or something else has gone wrong, you'll know about that right at this point here. You'll see the error messages. Up. And while the error messages kind of cascade, there's like a lot of information in each error message, um, you're really looking at the very bottom line, the line that's, the, that's closest to the prompt when you, uh, when you run this thing here, the bottom of the, the output. Um, you'll see that uh, the, the file where the problem has been, has been, um, has been called is, uh, you can see the file name. So I'm going to go back to my project, uh, and you can see that if I type in, if I type in um, my home page is going to be 127.0.0.1 pull in 8,000 slash music. Now, if I remove this music, oops, then I get an error message. That's okay, don't worry about that. That's, the error message is there because we have added a project and we haven't added any code uh, to tell the user what the main page of the site looks like. But that's okay, that's probably outside of the scope of all this right now, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna concentrate on actually going to the music site or any other app that we build. And when you type in music, and hopefully you can see you can't see this. Hang on. Let me just downshift that. Uh, so when I type in music, everybody see that? Oops, probably can't see. So when I go ahead and type in music, you can see that music is the is the the app that this is that we see. Now remember that music. Um, this word music is actually taken to our our, our, our program uh, urls.py in, in my site, um, and that site then moves. Where is that? It's um, sorry, sorry. It's uh, where is that? It's right here. So this program right here, this urls.py, that is your main file of the, of the whole of the whole site. Everyone who goes to the URL for your site will stop by here, and this one will say to the user. Who are you here to see? And then if you type, then if, if, your, if your link says music, then urls.py will say, oh, I see you're here for the music app. I'm going to send you on to the urls uh, keeper in music. And then they will tell you, direct you where to go from there. And so that's what this site, that's what this file was all about here. When we typed in uh, music, this is actually where we, um, where we were telling the website um, what we were doing there, where we wanted to go. And so then this, piece of information over here, they're saying, okay, well, it's, we're being referred, actually. We're being referred to this, this music app. And when we went to the music app, the first place we stopped was this file here, which is another URLS file. It says, okay, this is um, the music call. Um, what, uh, what kind of music are you looking for? Are you looking for a song? Are you looking for a search? Well, we don't have any of that stuff actually installed just yet. Instead, what we're doing it's just saying that if anyone shows up in the music site, then just go ahead and visit this file views, find the, the, um, the function called index, and, uh, and give them the index file, which is just your, which is this file here. That's, that's our, our index. That's all there is to it. In fact, I think if we look at the source of this thing here, it's really, this is the, this is the information that we get. This information here, this, the music apps homepage, um, that was actually code that we set ourselves um, uh, right here. Okay, 
So we actually use Python here. This is this is one thing that I find really just incredible about this whole thing. But we use Python uh, to, uh, to to create HTML code. Now we didn't worry about actually writing that code ourselves. Instead, we just made a string and this this place over here, this uh, this function HTTP response, actually converted the text that we created, which was this, into HTTP, and that is where this particular code came from. Which is actually just so. Um, I'm hoping that you get, you're getting kind of an, an, an idea about you know, your way around this the system here. These files that we work with um, are actually quite quite crucial. And so chances are, if 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 your if your website doesn't work when you're at, when you're applying or when you're applying a fix or a change, uh, it's probably because one of these files, the views or the URLs or something, uh, has a bug in it. But you will know when you look at your uh, when you look at the the output from when you run your your run server uh, right here, uh, you'll know what that error be. In fact, you'll see that error showing up down here someplace. Or you'll, see, you'll see some kind of some kind of warning or something that that will tell you that you need to go back and change something. Okay, so that's all very cool. Now the next thing that we are going to be doing um, is we talked about let me see, but we talked about actually kind of establishing a, a uh, database for this whole system. And so our database is the next couple of slides here where we had to actually connect this database. But luckily for us, though, luckily for us, uh, this code that we would have had to type in if we were using an earlier version of, uh, of Django, sorry, yeah. but this, this code right here that we would have had to type in with an earlier version of Django uh, is actually automatically placed in there for us. Which I, I mean, I can't tell you how convenient that is. Back in the early days when you were using Django and you had to, and you, and you, and you had to, you know, you, you'd run a, you'd, you'd basically run the wizard, create part of the project, and then they'd start giving you all this extra code that you had to type in yourself uh, to uh, actually finalize things. So in other, in other words, for instance, you um, in the earlier, like, you, if, you, if you wanted to like add anything more than this. Like another, like another string statement other than this that would be sent to your, your HTTP response, uh, you really had to code that stuff yourself. But now it's like we have all this code kind of being generated for us, including this piece of code, which is really just telling the website, oh yeah, you have a database connected. Oh yeah, what kind of database is that? Oh, it's an SQL3 database, and this is its name. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this piece of information um, is because on some websites, you may have multiple databases. Not an unusual thing to think about. You may have, I mean, you may have a database that controls who can log in. You may have a database the critical information, perhaps maybe the the, uh, the information that people are actually looking for when they log into your website. Who knows? Uh, so you may have multiple databases, and so you would uh, establish those names in this area here. Now, where do I actually find this file? It's your settings file, which is found in your my site. And if you look at, um, let's see if I can go into my, what I see in my settings. Um, let me just go ahead and, if I can do that, I have to move. Ugh. I'm going to, you can't see what I'm doing here, but I'm going to establish my project folder in Atom here as the project where I was working, which is my Django project that's in my main directory. So it's open here. And so if I show you, for instance, the my site, my site, my site, then my site again, which is file here called settings, which um, is where you put all this information. But also you have other things in there too. You can spend some time looking at it. You probably won't change any of the stuff here. But um, for those of us who are going to be creating a website that may be used by people of a, another language other than English, uh, you might change that information here because then that would inform your website about uh, printing certain types of characters to the screen. Um, you also have information about the time zone, and you have some other stuff in here. These are all, I think, uh, more time zone information. I'm not sure exactly what this is over here. Cut up and see. Most of these settings you'll never change yourself, never, ever touch. Um, so it's nice that that's, everything is kind of more or less put in place for us. And so you have all this just here to help. But what we did with this file, though, remember, um, is that we were working with this particular piece of, or actually we're talking about this particular code. In the early days, 
you had to program this in before anything would run. And that was really, a, a really boring. Okay, so going back here, um, now, one thing that we haven't done yet, I think we did this, I think we typed in this, this managed migrate. I'll type that in again, if you'd like uh, what happens. Uh, I don't think that's, uh, it's not gonna cause any damage because nothing has really changed. Um, but I'm going to just quit my, my server. Oops, let's do this. Control C will do that. Now I'm back. And if I, make sure I have the files here. If I type in this command here, oops, not the title. Python manage, and then the, the actual command is called migrate. If I run this, then you'll see that nothing new has, oops, sorry, change the size of this. It says here that nothing new has, has changed. But what does all that mean? This is actually really where we left off last time, where we we're beginning to talk about this. And so I'm thinking, what are migrations? Well, migrations are really the makings of the schema for your database. In other words, this is the, the place that your, your, your website is going to be using uh, to remember everything from users to like how many logins they've had to who's allowed to log in um, to the um, passwords. I mean, everything, every, every, like all the logistics of actually running a database in addition to other things too. But for here, we're just talking about the users, but there are many, many other tables that have to be filled up and that, or that, you know, that, the, that the database or um, the website uses to run, which is actually quite exciting. And so where do I find that, uh, that or what, what, what do I, well, what, what can I find inside that database? Well, let me just go back and bring and show you this tool here where we have this thing called DB Browser. Remember that? We uh, downloaded this software in, in class some time ago. It's freeware, you can go ahead and use this. But I like this though, because you know, while we could type in SQLite 3 and actually inspect our database, uh, one thing that we can do with this is that you can just use a mouse and kind of click on things and then tables. Um, and that is without having to type in uh, the, um, the command to search, okay, without having to type in a query. Um, so I'm just gonna, you can't see what I'm doing now, um, but what I'm doing is I'm looking for my files, uh, somewhere. I'm going to my Django projects, I'm going to my sites, and I'm looking at the db.sqlite3 file. You can see that file it's actually right up on the screen there. So there's a bunch of tables in here. Now this is a database, um, kind of like the ones that's, um, you know, that, you know, that we were talking about where they're really, really big and they're really, really robust and, and all powerful. And so because they're so big, you might want to use something like this DB browser uh, to kind of get around these web or these these uh, you know to look inside the database is going on. Otherwise, I mean, you'd have to type in uh, searches for seemingly all these these tables here uh, to see what's inside them. But what I like about this though is that if you click on this button here called Browse Data, um, then you have this thing this, this button here called Table. This button. When I click on Table. Um, underneath browse table or underneath browse, browse data, I can click on uh, different types of, uh, I can actually um, go through different uh, tables to look at. I can actually see the information that's inside. So I have, for instance, um, if you just go ahead and click this, I don't think you can see what I'm, actually, well, you can look at the, the group, you can look at the permissions, there's other authentication permissions, authentication user, authentication user groups, authentication user, user permissions, and then the rest of the stuff is like Django admin, content, migration, session sequence. Um, some of these uh, tables are just kind of like to hold information that Django uh, as a website needs in order to function. So this is like cookies. Use like cookies, but cookies for the website that help it to remember certain settings um, so that it runs according to the ways that we ask it to run. Um, what I like about this though is that if I click on these down arrows through this, um, you can see the attributes of each of the tables that Django has. So there's an attribute that's ID, password, uh, last login, is super user, uh, username, last name, email, is staff, is active, date joined, first name. You can get a, kind of get an idea um, from these names what kind of data they're looking for. And not just what kind of data they're, they're looking for, but the type of that data. So for instance, is staff, is active, that seems like a yes and no type of question to me. So you, you can imagine it's probably some kind of categorical data 
it's either a one or a zero, which you'd be finding in that spot there. Whereas password is likely to be a string, but it's not a string of the password. Um, instead, what this is, is a string of the encrypted password. So that each time when you type in your password into Django, and I think seemingly every other website anywhere, um, we have to type in a password. Um, the, 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 the stuff that you type in as a password um, is then uh, connected to the encryption algorithm. And then whatever is encrypted from the thing you typed in is then compared to the encrypted version, which is stored in, in the database. And if they match, that means that you must have typed in the correct password. But if they don't match, it means that you typed in something that when encrypted did not equal encrypted value of whatever, it's, whatever the password was. And so that's how you store passwords in a database. You're not actually storing the password, but you're storing the encrypted password. And then it's each time the user types in something, that something is never saved to the disk. Instead, it's, it's just encrypted, and then you compare two encrypted versions. And if they are the same, then the password must have. Um, so right, so, but getting back to this, um, these, uh, these tables, so you can see they're empty. There's nothing in them. I'm on, I'm on the left now, clicking on the, the uh, different, uh, here we are. well, there's something here. Django content seems to have something in it, but even then it's really not full, there's nothing in there. And so what we're doing now is we're going to go back and we're going to fill up some of our, our tables with some stuff. And the first thing that we have to fill up um, is actually, go back to my slides, uh, the first thing we have to do is to um, put in the super user. I mean, every uh, website needs to have some, some user, the super user, uh, who is in charge of maybe you know, of making all the, of the changes. And so we call that the super user, right? the, the admin. So I'm going to go ahead and, and stop my, actually, I've already stopped. I'll, I'll go back to my, to my terminal where I just, I'll actually stop the website. Make sure you have the, um, the manage file here You're in the right directory. And I'm now going to type in this Python manage create super user. And when I push enter, um, what's going to happen is it'll say, what's my username? I'm going to call this just plain admin, A-D-M-I-N. You can see what I'm working at there. Uh, and by the way, um, before I go any further, let me just uh, do something else. Um, you want to go back to, oops, I just lost my, ah, just, I just lost my database. There we go. <laughs> but what I'm saying is you want to close your database that's open now in, uh, um, in, in, in the DB browser. Find this here. There we go. So you want to go ahead and close this guy, uh, because otherwise you may not be able to write changes on your particular. So what I'm doing is I'm going to my file, and I'm going to type in or find the option for close database. So that means my database is now closed. And on a, on a Mac and a Linux machine, it may not make a big difference. Um, of course, your updates may be late, so you wouldn't get those. But on a Windows machine, you might actually get some errors when you try and run this command here. And so that's, um, I want to close that, close that database. Okay, so I'm going to type in for my, my special user, uh, my super user, I'll, I'll type in admin, my uh, email address. I may as well just put my here. Just because, just, my keys are sticking here. I have my email there, and I'll push enter. And now my password, it could be, it could be anything here, but for the sake of argument here, um, don't put like, you know, some superpower um, password here because you're probably going to be typing this password many, many times for this tutorial. So, I mean, leave it as just like pass one, two, three, four, something very, very basic. It doesn't like it when you do that. It does. It's not, it's not a bad password. <laughs> Sorry, it's, not, it's not a very good password. I'll just, I'll show you everyone. The thing is it, it doesn't like when I type in P-A-S-S-W, or sorry, one, two, three, four. It says it's too common. How dare they call my password common? I spent 10 minutes thinking about that. <laughs> common. I'm just gonna say yes, because I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, I mean, this is not, um, if this were a website where you were actually working online, then by all means, you want to have the, uh, the longest password you can think of. Make sure it's safe. But here, this password, or th this, this project is not online. I'm just using it to learn how to use it. But you can use whatever password you want, as long as you remember it. And the reason why I'm saying use something small for this is because 
I don't want to get to, I don't want you to get locked out of your project um, before you've had some time to, to play with it. So anyway, choose the password that you want. I'm going to use just a very basic one here. But then when if I mean when this is 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 ready to actually put online, then um, you can change the password to something much more fun. But you're absolutely right. It does not like that password. It's too short. Um, it's too easy to guess. And there are simple you know, algorithms actually that would can actually devise what passwords people would use, and that would be something that it would. Okay, so nothing really has changed. I've just typed in my I've I've created my my super user. What is different? Well, let's go and investigate. Let's go to the DB browser again, and see what has come up. So again, I have to open um, I have to open a database, and so I can just go to my recently up here. And I think that I can go to, here we go. I can go to my authorized user. Authorized user. In fact, um, I see this all in one big page. Doesn't really. But you have some other stuff in here. And so you can, see, look, you can look at the, the password. Uh, you can look at the last login. And it's like, when was the last time that the user actually logged in? Um, is this person super user? Just as we guessed. Is super user? It's a yes or no question. So one would be yes, and zero would be no. Uh, the username itself is just admin. Uh, the last name I left that blank, and here's the email. Is staff is active, and then the date joined. And so you have a whole wealth of information here. First name I can I can put something here. But you have a whole wealth of information here that Django uses uh, in its database. It just, it just puts this information in there automatically. Now. Before I go any further, I wanted to spend some time um, actually talking about these tables. I think it's, are my slides, the slides actually talk about that here, or is it something? Oh, let's go back to the slides for a second here. Um, yeah, so before we get to the database support here, uh, here we go, we're talking about this, this file here called models. So this file called models.py, um, this is how we create the schema for our database. Now remember that when we were working with SQL Lite before, we had to create a schema. That means we had to create the tables, the create table command. But we had to create tables into which we would actually put um, attributes, which would hold on to our variables. So notice that um, I mean, if you just go back to this this table here in Django, um, all these tables have been created, but actually we didn't do anything. I mean, I didn't type in any create table commands. Yet there they are. And so what gives? What is up with that? And so how does that, how do these tables actually get created? Uh, they get created from going to this, uh, I can find it here. Well, I'm looking for this models file, which I can probably find. Music, music, here we are. It's in your music directory. So if I look at models, you can see that there's some, this is where you, you, could, like, you, you, could, you could actually change some of your, Table stuff here. I'm not sure why I'm not seeing more of my models here. I wonder whether let's go back to my slides. Is there? Uh, okay, so here's my slides. And so we're using this music models here. It becomes the attributes. So this is where we're going to be storing some attributes for the tables here. We can change our. Oh, I know. We haven't actually put our tables in yet. The tables, actually, let me let me correct. Okay. So the model, the, the tables that we have here, in other words, these tables that we see have nothing to do with, with the app that we built. These are all standard tables that come with Django. That means that Django, regardless of what it's doing, it always needs to have information stored in these tables. And so it has its own models file, sorry, its own models file that uh, creates this schema. So in this, in fact, in this schema, one thing I really like about this, if I if I click on ID and name, I can go over here and if I move this. Okay, but you can see though that, for instance, when Django sets up its its author or authorized group here, it has an ID which is an integer and a name which is a varchar. So it's always using varchar. And then if I scroll scroll a little bit further, I can see more information about how it set up its schema. Its ID, I can see its name. See that it's like a see over here the name varchar 150, non null unique. So every table that, that Django uses has a schema. 
So now what I'm talking about is that it's on us to now create the schema uh, that we'd like to have um, to actually create some kind of a music, or our music app. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna modify this file models uh, to build a schema in which we're going to be creating an album in which we're gonna be holding onto information, a table called album. And that table is going to have an attribute called artist, album title, genre, album logo, and I think when we move on, we'll have another table called song, and song is gonna have an album. It's going to have um, a file type, I guess we're gonna, if you want to have like an album cover for something, um, and then we'll have like an, a song title. So we're gonna have some, we're gonna, never mind what, what all these things are, but we're going to be creating uh, two tables of our own, which really is there to, Post the data for our music. So remember, we want a table that holds artist name, album title, the genre of the music, and then we have this logo, which is just going to be a link to a place online where we're just going to steal their image. Of course, we wouldn't do this for a real in-production thing here. We'd have to actually have images stored locally. But for this thing, I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to grab an, a string, which is an HTML link to somewhere else that's going to have a, a graphic, and that's what I'm going to put in here. Otherwise, the artist is going to be a string, which is a name. The title is going to be a, or the album title is going to be another string, which is a name. And the genre, probably another string. So now we need to put this information into a file called, um, oops, mark this all. Here. Um, we're going to put this into our, our file called models, and that's going to go into our settings file. So come with me now. Let me go ahead and copy this. Come with me now to the editor, we are, and I'm going to just place this stuff in there and I'm going to try my very, very best to um, edit my code, and of course it doesn't. Ah, it's so annoying how it doesn't work. How they look weird. Just around here, sorry. Uh, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'll, Now, I, my first line is this from Django import line here model. Uh, and so then I have the next, the next line is gonna be this, this class. Uh, and that's gonna be the very, all the way over. Then I'm gonna push this over. The next line is gonna be this way. Um, by the way, at the end of class today, if you'd like, um, I will make available uh, my code so that uh, you can use this code if you're having some trouble formatting your, uh, your code here, which I think, I, I think that many people know. Uh, so anyway, I have this over here. Next, I'm going to put a um, uh, holds album name. I'm just going to I'm just creating this exactly as I see this for my slides. Uh, hopefully, you're doing the same thing over there, and it's going better for you than it is for me. Um, album title that's got to be indented here because we're we're going to be working with the um, we're working with some stuff here. Uh, let me just do this. We have the logo, the genre. The genre is going to be here, back in there. The genre is over here. And then I have, what am I missing? They're not necessary. They're not necessary. They were, they're actually the double hashes. So the big question is, um, I'm looking at the at the slides here. Why do I have double slide or double hashes here? I have those there so that you can see the difference between one line and the next. But it's kind of complicating things um, at this stage of the game. I'm trying to edit my file because it's <laughs> they're all just getting all jumbled together. But you can you can do without them if you want. It's okay. It doesn't uh, not going to it's not cause any trouble. Um, so now I'm going to go down to the here double hashes. I'm going to try and recreate this file as best I can. Close the genre, and then after this, let's see. I'm going to have to have it hold the URL. Uh, let's see. Album logo. I think. I think that's it. Yeah, like I said, so when we are done with this, when we're finished with this file here, I mean, when we when we create this project, 
I'll leave this. I'll, I'll leave this in your in your sandbox so that you can pick it up and compare your changes with my changes. I th I think that everything looks okay. What I'm looking at is that, for instance, if you're if you're familiar with how to write classes in Python, uh, you have classes which are all the way over to the, uh, the left. Then you have your actual the lines inside your classes. In other words, the actual you know yeah I, I guess the declaration statements. Uh, these are going to be inside here indented. And so um, you should be able to go back to your be able to go back to this page here and kind of get a, an idea about uh, how your indents look. Here's your class, it's all the way to the uh, to the left. And we have these guys all over here based out based over to the right by one one tab. Okay, I'm feeling good about this. I'm hoping that this is going to work. I'm going to save this. Uh, and I'm gonna go and run it. How about that? How about that? So um, you can go. I mean, you can you can you can you can still spend time doing what you're doing. Um, go back to your slides here. I'm just going to go to the uh, my, my 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 terminal and uh, and run this and just to verify that. It... Now to actually go ahead and verify that things are actually working together, um, what I need to do is I need to run a command, and that command is going to be something called uh, was it make. Um, we're talking to this pen or this this my um oops manage uh and it's a make migrations music okay i think that 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 did that work properly let me go back and check so what i'm looking to see is did anything happen right now nothing just came right, hang on i think i need to do some other stuff Oh, before I can do that, so then I have to do this. This I do this this command here. So then, which is, I'm getting these commands actually from the. Oops, shoot. I'm getting these commands from my slides, which are right here. And you're going to be typing in here the make migrations music. Like that. If I go to my um, terminal, you can see, for instance, by just typing that in, that I'm getting this error message saying uh, no installed app with label music. I'm going to ignore that for a second here, and then run the other command and see whether that makes any difference at all. So when I go here, make migrate, or sorry, uh, manage migrate, if I run that, I'm hoping that that's going to make something. So, um, yeah, so something did happen. But, you know, maybe I have to add more information. Let me go back to my slides and, and add some more. Add the other part of the other part of the file here. Oh, I know what we have to do. I know what we have to do. Um, I jumped ahead of myself. Let me just let me do this other piece here first. I'm going to go back to this thing here. I'm going to put this piece of the this class into my into my code. In fact, you know, one thing you might try and do uh, is just go line by line. Maybe that would be easier than having to kind of uh, you know get all confused with everything else. And so what I'm doing is I'm going uh, line by oops, um, line by line from my slides, where you can kind of get an idea of how things are going. So here. Copy some stuff. Uh, this is all these are comments. Go back down here, and I'll just paste that in there. We'll organize that later. It doesn't really have any impact. So I'll go back here, and I'm going to go to this this line here. Uh, this is supposed to be all one big line. Copy that. We go back to my editor, and it's here. This is supposed to be all in one line, which it is. Okay. And then I'll just keep on going back and forth. And hopefully this is a better way of, of, of doing things so that I don't have to worry about going through this mess. Hopefully. File type. Yes, it is. <clears throat> so I'm just going to go back and forth and do all this. And then I just have these three lines here that I'm going to. Oops, where do I get the rest of this? Editor, and I'll put this in right here. And here, what I'm going to do is I'll put this over one, and then I have song to actually, what is the actual line? The actual line was called song title. Uh, so I'll put this there. And then I have the end of my stuff right there. Okay, so I am hoping that that 
is going to be correct code. I'm just going to look over this one last time to see whether I didn't make a mistake someplace. Probably end up somewhere. My luck today. <laughs> With my luck today. Okay, so I think that's good enough. I think that's good enough. So I've saved this. I've saved this. And now the next thing that we have to do is going back to the slides here, there's one thing um, is that we have this part that I didn't tell you about um, earlier, but we have to tell, we've already, so before we can actually create the tables, we need to tell Django to go and look for the tables. I know that sounds really stupid, but we've created this file, and then we have to tell the website, or the Django project, that the file has been created, and that more importantly, the file can be found in the, for the music app. So we're, we have to go to this, was there a question? Anyway, if you have a question, please uh, just blurt it out. Otherwise, um, I can't really watch the uh, the chat as, as well as I'd like. But if you have a question, please let me know. I, th I thought I heard something, but my volume wasn't good. There's some talking in the hallway or <laughs> something. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and, and go to this, this settings file again. This is that file that we were talking about earlier. Uh, so come with me there to my editor. There are. Welcome. Um, and I'm going to go to settings.py, and we're looking now for a part of the file which is talking about installed apps. How do I find that? This is a piece that, okay, here we are. Is this piece, is this piece up here? So this is saying that these, these are places where the Django project can look to find databases and other things that it needs. Or other, and other pieces that it needs to actually run the to run the, the site here. Now, since we just created a database for our music app, we need to tell Django that the database has been created for our Django app. And so, what I'm going to do is just drop this down one line. And I'll be very very careful that the everything is is lined up accordingly. So, what I'm going to do is actually just make sure that I'll just put like five spaces here. So everything is exactly the same. You can see, in fact, if you can if you can see what I'm looking at, kind of hard to see, but there are little spaces. You can see like each of the spaces in my Django app. Actually, turn that these invisible characters on. You want to make sure that you're using the exact same types of spacings that they use for the other parts of this. In other words, just pushing space once is going to give you an error because Python's going to say um, this is not the same indentation as the as the line that follows it. So what I tend to do is I just go to the line underneath it. And copy out the spaces that they have here. These are four spaces, and then just paste those spaces right here. So I know that all of these guys have all been indented exactly the same. That is um, kind of one of the drawbacks to Python. As much as I love Python, I'm not in love with the spacing issues that, that tend to happen, like the white space issues. I think that's, uh, I think I'm probably speaking to a bunch of people <laughs> who already know these things. Anyway, go ahead and save that. Go back to your, um, where are we now? I'm going to go back to my, my, my terminal, or I have to go back to my slides before I do that. You can see all this information has been actually uh, has been uh, mentioned here in your slides. And now we can go ahead and run these commands right here. And so if I go to this, uh, go back to my terminal, transition there, I'll just paste that in there and just see what happens. Oh, perfect. It worked out. This is exactly what you want to see. You want to see this. Now, what this is saying is that your tables were created. <laughs> You're probably thinking, is, is that all we get? Should it be like a, a bell or something going off or something? Um, no, actually, it doesn't work that way. Um, what you're expecting to find is the uh, some kind of a, that your, your tables are actually being created. Oops. Um, I'm just looking at my notes here. Anyhow, so the next thing we need to do is we need to run this other command. I know that we have like three minutes left. We're going to get this database established, and then on Friday, we're going to just spend some time playing with this, I think. But if you go back now to your slides, you'll find the next command. What this has done, actually, though, is this make migrations music. This has said, Django, go to the settings.py file and check out uh, the, uh, the schema that we've programmed in Python. and and uh, start making that um, and figure out what the schema is. Yes, sir? OK, yeah. So then the migrate command is going to say, make those settings, um, save those settings in the database. Actually, 
create the settings in the database. And if you run that, if you go back over here and you just paste that in here, you'll find that running migrations, applying them. So over here, the first command to be typed in here means to really to create that schema. And the next command to be typed here actually says, make those settings kind of known across the network. So big deal, what has happened? If I type in ls minus l, this is what I'm looking to see. Um, we're at 12.18, that's the time that we're at right now. I think you can see the time. Uh, Twelve eighteen, and I can see that the time of my file has just changed, which suggests to me that the file has been. That's a that's a simple hack you can do, and also the file is a little bit bigger than what it was before. That's what I'm looking at. So now I'm going to go to um, my. Um, I'm going to go to my browser. If I can just take you there with me, okay. And I have to. I just close the file. I'm going to open it again just to see what's inside it. So if I go to my open file that I've recently opened. Um, you'll see, for instance, oops, where is it now? Mm, where is it? Here. These are new files, or these are new tables. So we have music album and music song. In fact, if I go and if I open up the music album, I see that I have artist, I have ID, artist, um, album title, genre, album logo. Now let me just tell you uh, actually what some of these things are here. I have bar char the for the ID it's an integer. Um, for the I have for the for the artist I have a bar char. If I can just close a little bit so crazy here. Scoot, scoot, scoot. The artists they're basically all var chars. Now, before I move any further, in the last minute that we have, um, <laughs> the last 30 seconds, um, let me just take you back to the uh, my my editor. And let me just show you where this stuff is coming from. These things are coming from this models file here. So remember, we have artist, we have album title, genre, and we have album logo. I don't know what all that information, all that noise is. <laughs> it's not me. But this information that you see right here is actually coming from your, uh, actually, that's, that's being used to actually create these tables here. So that's where artist, album title, genre, and logo are all right here. Um, sadly, we're out of time. This class just isn't long enough each day. I do apologize for that. But let me come back on Friday. Um, we're going to pick it up from there, and then we're actually going to just play around with the website, play around with the data of the database here, and uh, see what else we can do. There is more good stuff. Right. <laughs> just one more question. Yes, sir. The other window for the to actually check out the. So this is okay. So the question was. What am I looking at here? This is DB Browser. This is a, a, a tool that we introduced back uh, two weeks ago or something. DB Browser, but if you do a search online for DB Browser, you can tell. It's a free open source project. Anyway, everybody, uh, thank you very much for your attention. Stay well, and I will see you on Friday.